approximately 5.30 this afternoon, uh, multiple volunteer departments were dispatched to a commercial fire at the Feathercrest Farms on Highway 21 East, just, just east of Purton. Um, upon arrival, uh, there were two buildings on Feathercrest Farms property that were involved with heavy fire showing. Um, at this time, uh, the, the fire um, is contained to the two buildings. Um, there have been no injuries, no deaths of any personnel or um, civilians. Um, we do have uh, a request that all traffic on 21 continue to, to proceed as normal. Um, we've had some traffic issues um, during the evening. Um, right now, Democrat Road is closed from Highway 21 to Oak Lake Road. However, if you live on the Oak Lake Road side of Democrat Road, you will be able to access your residence, but you will we'll have to verify your resident there. How long are we expecting this to burn for? Um, so this is gonna be a multi-day operation. Um, at this point, it's too dangerous for our firefighters to actually get into the building. Um, so right now, our, our main um, focus is just to contain the fire to what is burning right now. And uh, so we'll have fire units on scene for for probably several days. As you said, you know, multiple units, but what are those big dangers that they're facing with this fire? So the problem with this type of fire is that it's a metal building. And so you have, a, and they're very tall. And so one of the problems that we're experiencing on scene is that the walls are starting to collapse. And so our, our firefighters uh, could be in danger of falling uh, debris, um, anything like that. So we have to, to position our, our fire lines, our fire hoses and stuff in a position to where um, our firefighters aren't in danger and we don't get anybody injured on this type of fire. You've mentioned a lot of units. Do we know how many units are involved in this? So we have approximately 100 firefighters on scene uh, to include all the Brazos County Volunteer Fire Departments and ESDs along with the City of Bryan, City of College Station and we have multiple surrounding counties here as well to, to provide manpower and water. Do you have any idea what started the fire yet? Not at this time. We are, uh, you know, we'll investigate um, once the fire is under control and we talk to a bunch of people. So it is under investigation at this point. Okay, and um, how are y'all getting water to the scene since I see there's not so out there? So being that this is a rural area, we have to set up what we call a, a water shuttle. So we have uh, water tenders, which all their job is to do is haul water to the scene. And we have a shuttle operation where the tenders are coming in, dumping their water, and then going to the hydrants in, in curtain, actually. So they actually have to leave the scene, fill up with water, and then come back. Do we know how many water tenders there are being used? At this point in time, uh, I don't know the exact count, but I do know that there are multiple, multiple tenders on scene working. You know, we were up at the gas station a little bit um, waiting on y'all, but when we were there, we noticed kind of a line of fire trucks waiting for that one hydrant and then, you know, down in Curtin, there was one hydrant again. You know, how does that complicate things when y'all are trying to work fast? So when we have uh, in rural operations like this, the further away from town you get, the, the hydrants get fewer. But with the new subdivisions and new industry coming into the areas, we do get more and more hydrants available to utilize. Um, but identifying those hydrants becomes an issue. But once we identify them, then we use them. And so um, it, it works out pretty well. Um, so far, um, we, we have actually kept water flowing the whole time we've been on scene. And as far as just kind of that off, offensive or defensive strategy when you have those other buildings so close together? It, it becomes a, definitely a, 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 it becomes an issue. It, it becomes a strategy. Um, and with, with Chief Watkins here, um, he was the incident commander for the scene, or is the incident commander for the scene. Um, his job is to come up with the tactics to actually fight this fire and keep it contained to the buildings that are burning. And fortunately, you know, early on we did have some winds, but as the night um, sets on us and the winds die down, it becomes a little bit easier to, to contain that fire. How long did it take you guys to contain that fire? That fire is still actively burning. Um, so I would say, uh, Chief, what? Probably an hour and a half before we had forward progression stopped. Um, the uh, We had to uh, perform a, what we call a block, is, is find a uh, less susceptible area in the building, uh, moving further down um, and uh, set up and prepare for the fire to get to us, uh, as opposed to trying to catch up with it. The, uh, with the, as tall as the structure was and uh, some of the uh, fire load in the building, um, it was uh, it was overtaking uh, it was overtaking some of the structure 
faster than we could. So we had to move downwind um, and try and set up a, a good defensive stance to try and get a, a good handle on the fire. Um, the, uh, like uh, Jason had, had mentioned, uh, we, uh, we kept it to the original buildings that it was contained, but, all those, uh, but those buildings are a total loss. And structurally right now, we just can't get in to do anything more than put water, throw water on it from the outside until we have some heavy equipment to come in there and start moving some of that uh, metal and structural uh, components around. Are there any concerns about air quality? So not at this time. The, the smoke is lifting into the atmosphere. We don't have any smoke inversion going on right now. So it's just kind of, you know, going up into the atmosphere and, and dissipating. Um, had we had high winds that would have caused the smoke inversion that would have banked the smoke plume to the ground, then we would have probably done a little bit more to, to maybe test the air quality and stuff. But at this time, because of the um, metal building and that type of stuff and the, the way the smoke was rising out into the atmosphere, we weren't too concerned at that time. We had no uh, hazmat, what we consider hazmat, whether it's fuel or, or any type of a chemical product on scene burning at any time. Um, nor do we have any runoff from, you know, from that to, to cause any uh, environmental concerns. Um, the uh, state agency TCEQ has been notified and they'll, they'll come up to, uh, to do their evaluation as well. Uh, but uh, luckily we, uh, the wind uh, was, uh, was for us and against us at the same time. So. Is there anything the community needs to be aware of over the next few days as you guys continue to fight the fire? Just that it's, uh, it's going to be an ongoing situation. Just stay away from the, from the facility. Um, you know, the highway traffic, don't stop to take pictures on the side of the highway because that becomes a traffic concern and we're concerned about motor vehicle crashes on the highway um, with onlookers and stuff. Um, at one point we had a solid, solid line of vehicles, you know, clogging up 21, which prevented our fire apparatus from getting in and normal traffic flow. So um, fortunately the, the Sheriff's Office along with uh, DPS and, and uh, State Game Warden they were able to clear that traffic out pretty, pretty quickly. You know, having you all three in front of us is just a small picture of the teamwork that's happening out there still. You know, how important is teamwork on a scene like this and everyone kind of working together to prevent something? Well, I'll tell you from an emergency management side that when you can plan all day long and when, it, when something like this happens, you can only plan so much and practice so much and then when it comes together and we start functioning and law enforcement's working with fire and emergency management's working with fire and we come together in the command post and, and be able to, to bring everybody together to work an issue that, that very well could have gotten out of hand right quick in a hurry, um, it does, um, you know, it, it is a, a saving grace for everybody to, to be able to work together and come together. And especially when you have departments from outside our county mm -hmm. coming into the area and you know because we we focus on that incident command system the the and, and focus on on you know the scene is the same it's just bigger and we focus on that incident command system and everybody functions under that command system it really does help and and bring everybody together to work very well together do we have a time on what the initial response time was um, I will tell you that we had units on scene. Um, so with volunteer departments, it does take a little bit, okay, to get units to the scene. But we did have units start showing up probably within 10 minutes of the, um, uh, of the initial dispatch time. Um, however, it, 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 you know, we could have had a, a crew sitting right here in Curtin with a full engine crew and it would have made a, a bit of difference because the amount of fire that was already present before we were even notified about the fire. So, um, you know, it, it's just once we got everybody there, the operation kicked off and really started working. Yeah, I, th I think uh, not enough can be said about those initial boots on the ground crews. Um, that's not to forget our mutual aid partners that have come in and provided that water to keep us from running out of water. But those, uh, those initial crews to get it uh, set up, uh, set the block up, to contain it to those initial two buildings that was on fire when we originally got that call. Um, not enough can be said about the the work that they that they done and that they done quick they done early they done effectively and you know from an emergency management standpoint from a fire standpoint when we have stuff like this yeah we're we're working to control the fire but law enforcement becomes a very important mm -hmm. aspect because if the roads are blocked we can't get our our 
our apparatus in to fight that fire. We can't get the folks that need to be there to fight that fire if we have that traffic concern. So having the full force of the sheriff's office to come out and help us made a, a, a huge, huge difference for us. I'm not sure if this is something you could answer, but you kind of mentioned it was a big fire from the get-go. Was there anyone present when the fire started or was it kind of discovered? Um, I will tell you that there were workers on site um, at the time, um, but we haven't gotten to the point where uh, we're, we're going to release any information on how many people were on site at the time the fire started. And I know you, it, you're fighting it with water. Is it a chemical fire or is it something you can discuss or is it just like, is it a certain type of fire versus your run of the mill uh, fire? It's, that... it's, it's typical, typical construction. Like I said, no hazmat. Um, there are, there are plastics and, and insulation and those type things that, that are typical to, to any commercial building. Um, this one, this one was nothing, uh, nothing different than that. I said, it's just the, the size, the construction, uh, the wind did not help us in these open buildings. Um, and that's what, that's what that facility is, is large open buildings. Um, that's their operation. So, uh, that, uh, that did not help any at all. Like I said, the wind helped us and hurt us today. Yeah, and just to make sure uh, I have it correct, you said it was two buildings that were on fire and y'all were able to contain it to those two buildings. That's correct. Do you know what those two buildings were, what their function was? Not at or? this time. No. At this time, okay. Um, I have spoken with Feathercrest Farms um, and they are going to release some information tomorrow. Um, their uh, public information officer will uh, release a statement sometime tomorrow. Okay. I'm all out. All okay. Okay. Thank y'all, gentlemen. Right. Thank you. No problem. Thank y'all very much.